uh, as most of you are aware, we're still in a deep, deep freeze here in Canada. I know, I'm not sure if you are. <laughs> most of you that are from warm climates probably don't even realize that Canada is in a deep freeze. Um, I showed you that short video last night I'd done from my uh, yard shack. We don't go out in the yard very much, only just to check in, in and out trucks, which is good because uh, they pretty much protect us and make sure that we don't freeze and stuff like that and safety precautions and all that, so that's good. So we spend most of the night in that little shack. Um, today's Tuesday, yes. Today is Tuesday? Yes, it is. Whew. See, I'm screwed up on days already. <coughs> I found this little uh, nugget of truth here this morning that I'm going to share with you. It's called New Life Not in the Old Man. We cannot find newness of life in the old man. We look in vain at our flesh to find spirit. We look in vain to discover righteousness in ourselves. That would be the same as putting our faith in ourselves. It is foolish to base our standing before God on that which God says is dead by virtue of the cross. The reality is revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. <clears throat> Yet you of him are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, besides righteousness and holiness and deliverance, that according as it is written, he who is boasting in the Lord, let him be boasting. Without understanding this, we become disillusioned, disappointed, and discouraged. Christ's spirit in us is a treasure. As Paul explains in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, Now we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the transcendence of the power may be made may be of God and not of us. The treasure of Christ's spirit is in, is in earthen vessels, our flesh and blood. That is where the problem lies, as Paul records in Romans chapter 7, verse 18 through 20. For I am aware that good is not making its home in me. That is in my flesh, for the will is lying beside me. Yet to be affecting the ideal is not. For it is not the good that I will I am doing, but the evil that I am not willing I am putting into practice. Now if what I am not willing, this I am doing, it is no longer I who am affecting it, but sin making its home in me. How he, he could see a war between his will and sin in his mortal body, as we all can, I believe. But he thanked God that there was, there was something which rescued him out of the body of death, which is grace. Paul says, says it right, as clear as day. Grace is what rescues you out of this body of death. Most followers of the Lord Jesus Christ can quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For in, gra in grace through faith are you saved. And this is not out of you. It is God's approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. It is one thing to know the scripture, but is another thing to live the scripture. May, many say that they teach grace, but it is usually we believe in grace, but, see, they get that but in there. <coughs> what they are saying, in effect, is terms and conditions apply. Read the small print, but it doesn't. Grace is unadulterated. Grace is clear and pure and is from God alone. He is the one that brings you through the, the times of trial and gives you the grace to see through to the other side. <coughs> Just as the Jews added laws to the law of Mo laws of Moses, some Christians have added conditions to, to the truth about grace. The reason this unqualified teaching would be give people an excuse to sin expecting to get away with it, a license to sin without the discipline of the law, the reason what people would sin, sin in, in all they want because God will forgive them anyway. Okay, so there you go. Okay, they, that there is something else. <laughs> Your freedom in Christ does not give you a license 
to go out there and just do whatever the heck you want, you know? You do have a human conscience, okay? So God perfects you that way. He brings you through trial and affliction and, and experiences on purpose so you can grow in Christ and you become mature in Christ. You don't want to do it after a while. The practices of the, of the world and the flesh, you don't want to do them after a while. Why? Why? Because you are growing in Christ and you're coming through these experiences. You know that they are going to be done away with on purpose. Think about it. At the dais of Christ, all that is going to be burnt up. All the bad is going to be burnt up. Well, God is preparing you now. So your freedom in Christ is your freedom in Christ. <coughs> what does God apply? When does God apply his, his grace? It is before, during, or is it before, during, or after sin? Is there a cell by date with God's grace? When it's gone, it's gone. No. Emphatically, no. Imagine for a moment you are a new believer. You believe Christ died for you. You receive justification for all your past sin. Fine, wonderful, but incredibly, it is more than that. You were made right with God for all your past sins, all your present sins, and all your future sins. Everything is taken care of. <coughs> the grace of God is not laxing when it comes to that. He did it through his son on that cross, on that Roman pole. He took away the sin of the world. Believe it. Understand it. So no matter what you do, you can't screw it up. It's already been taken care of. But this too is this is too good to be true. That's what you would say. It can't work like that. Can it? It can. It does. It will. In your zeal for God, in those early days, you determine never to sin again. But inevitably, you do sin. And that is missing the mark. Simple as that. What do, you have, what do you have to do now to receive forgiveness? Do you say that in the future you will keep the law so that you will not be thrown into hellfire? Your works are going to get you back into God's books. God's good books. Your works. Oh, boy. This idea has been around for centuries. What did Paul think about it? He tells us in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. I am marveling that thus swiftly you are transferred from that which calls you in the grace of Christ to a different evangel which is not another. Why did the Galatians th think like this? Paul continues, except it be that some who are disturbing you want also to distort the evangel of Christ. What was that evangel? The good news that others had distorted. Paul tells us in the previous verse, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives himself for our sins, so that he may extricate us out of the present wicked eon, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for the eons of the eons. Amen. God is doing all this to glorify his grace. To be, and because he loves us, Romans chapter 5 verse 8 brings reassurance. Yet God is commending this love to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, even when we sin. Paul wanted to know only one thing from the foolish Galatians, chapter 3 verses 2 and 3. Did you get the Spirit by works of law or by learning, by hearing of faith? Undertaking in spirit are you now being completed in flesh? He emphasizes again the point in verses 5 and 6. Did you get the Spirit by works of law or by hearing of faith? According as Abraham believes God, it is reckoned to him for, for righteousness. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to stop there. Yes. I'll finish reading the rest of this tomorrow. This is good. It is clear as day. You know, God's grace takes care of it all. But does, that does not give you the license to go out there and just go nuts. It doesn't. Your freedom in Christ? No, it doesn't. You're being perfected in Christ. Perfected. Think about this. It's a process. You're being perfected. You're given a realization and you're given maturity in Christ. You'll grow up in Christ. And this is by experience, right? But think about this. Your freedom in Christ 
go ahead, enjoy, enjoy. But it does not give you the license to just go nuts. You know, ultimately, you wouldn't go out and murder someone. Ultimately, you wouldn't go out and do the most heinous sin of all. Why? Because you're in Christ and you've been given the grace of God. I'm just going to the extreme there of the so-called sins, missing of the mark. Well, every human being does miss the mark, including us. So, enjoy your freedom in Christ. Know that God is giving you the experiences and the enjoyment of his allotment among the saints. And love your brethren. Pray for your brethren, which I do continually. And uh, receive the grace of God and love it. And thank you all. I love you all. You are a blessing to me, and may God's grace continue to bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.